This Torah class is brought to you by TorahAnytime.com. Okay, good morning, Rabbi Sai. We're up to Daniel Parak Yud. Yud Aleph. But we're going to go back to one Pasuk. I just want to take a look at one more Pasuk at the end of Parak Yud. That's Daniel Parak Yud, Pasuk Chaf Aleph. And this is the Malach Gavriel speaking to Daniel. And he's telling Daniel about the Persian Empire and how the Persians will be somewhat friendly and, um, and positive to the Jewish people. But nevertheless, the empire that follows the Persian Empire and the Greeks will be much more difficult. And not even he, Gavriel, talking, not even I, he says, can uh, protect the Jewish people from the Greeks. But look, he writes in Pasuk Chaval, Aval Agid Lecha, but let me tell you, didn't, didn't the Malach Gavriel, uh, uh, didn't he uh, work do his job in the time of uh, Rome Arena? Yeah, but he, he still, he, he, I he didn't retire. Once they do a job, they're finished. So no, they can't do a job, two jobs in one time. That doesn't mean they can't return and do another job. They can do another job after they finish the first job. Okay, they can't but do Ga- Gavriel, traditionally, the Gemara says, he's a Malach of Din. So whenever Hashem needs him, he's ready to do his job. Pasuk Chavav, Aval Agid Gavriel tells Daniel, I will tell you, as Harashim, that which is imprinted, Bechsav Emes, in a true script, Bein Echad Meschazek Imi, and there is not one person who strengthens himself with me, Al Eila for these, Ki Im Michael Sarchem, only Michael, your uh, minister, your specific angel. In other words, Gabriel is saying that this impending decree of the Greek Empire, let me tell you, that Gabriel says, it is written in a true script, and nobody is even strengthened with me in order to protect you from the Greek Empire. Says Rashi, Shtar Hagzera. What does it mean, that which is written in a true script? The document of decree. The MS who it is true. The Einechad B'chol HaSarim Ho'Yoyinu Meschazik La'Azreini Al-Kalela Kiyim Michal. And none of the angels are doing anything or can do anything to protect you. Only Michal, the the ministering angel of Kla Yisrael. Now it's quite interesting that the Gemara in Yavamais on Daf Kofhei asked the following question. What does Gabriel mean as Harashim B'Ksav Emes? What's written in a true script as opposed to what? As opposed to what's written as Sheker V'Chazov? The Gzera. Well, in, a, in other words, the Gabriel says, let me tell you something. Let me, say, let me tell you what's written truthfully as opposed to what? As opposed to the books that are Baba It can't be changed. It's a Gezerah that's written ah. from Shemayim. So the Gemara Nivama says, What are there Ksavim from Hashem that are MS and Ksavim from Hashem that are Baba It could be changed. Yes, yeah, so the Gemara says, If it's written with a Shvua, then it's true and it cannot be reversed. But if it's written without an oath, if God doesn't take an oath, then it could be reversed. So this is saying, Let me tell you what's written, Ksav MS. With an oath, with a shvua. And therefore it can't be reversed, but even so, Gabriel is telling Daniel, Michael may be able to do something, even though it's an oath, even though it's written with a, with a shvua. Okay, now we're up to Perk Yud Aleph. Now Perk Yud Aleph, some of the hardest psukim that we've seen so far. And I took a look at it last night, and my head was spinning. Because in order to understand these psukim, you have to know Greek history. You have to say, what? You have to know Greek history? Why do you have to know Greek history? The Malbim, the Abarbanel, explain every detail of these Psukim, different events in politics in ancient Greece, about different governors and different emperors plotting against other emperors, women plotting against other women, rival wives plotting against other rival wives, and apparently the Malbim writes very clearly, he learned Greek history. The Abarbanel, and based on the knowledge of the details of the gory details of Greek history, he explains the details of these psukim. So finally, I, I went over it this morning, maybe get it a little clearer. The first thing we have to know is the emperor, the first emperor of Greece who took over, he defeated the Persian Empire, was obviously 
Alexander. Alexander the Great. He became uh, emperor at a very young age, I believe at the age of uh, 20. His empire lasted for 12 years. So you became like the environmental and the model who mm-hmm. studied Greek history. I, uh, yeah, the, <laughs> the only thing is I had about, you know, one night to do it. <laughs> and uh, Alexander the Great, his reign lasted for 12 years. He died prematurely at the age of 32. Right? What? What happened to him? According to the historians, he, he got a fever and he died in Persia. Dangerous place. <laughs> right? What? Two rivers. He crossed the Syria Daria. There are two rivers. One is called Syria Daria, one called the Muri Daria. The Syria Daria is called the Crazy River. Today, you are near the river, a year later, to be a mile away from the river. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, Alexander, interesting. Alexander, he became emperor at the age of 20. His empire lasted 12 years. He died, according to one account, at 32. Another account at 33. After his empire was over, after, excuse me, his untimely death, his empire was split among his four, his generals. Who were the four, his generals? Tomai. Tomai took... Egypt. Egypt. Seleucus took Assyria and Babylon. Antigonus, Antigonus, he took Persia and Asia Minor. And Philip, who's Philip? Philip was Alexander's brother. He took Macedonia. Okay, so after, after Alexander, Alexander's empire was uh, split up among his four generals. Ptolemy took Egypt. Seleucus took Assyria and Babylon. Antigonus took Persia and Asia Minor. Philip, Alexander's brother, took Macedonia. They, they, there was plenty there. There was a lot to take. Right. A lot to take. Now, so far we had this prophecy twice. Perak Zion, Pasuk Vav, we, Daniel had a vision of the leopard with four heads and four wings. The leopard represents Greece. The four heads represent the breakup of Greece into the four generals. He also, in Parakhes, Pasukhes, he saw the he goat, the sire, that had one horn, and then the horn breaks away and four horns grow in its place. That represents that the empire of Alexander is going to break up into four. Now we're going to get a little bit deeper into the Greek empire. Now, out of the four empires, only two of them really had Kiyom. Talmai. Talmai had a dynasty. Talmai first, the Talmai the first, Talmai the second, and the Northern Empire, the Northern Empire of Babylonia and Assyria, which was taken over by Seleucus, which later became known as Antiochia. Antiochia, which we had Antiochus the first, and from there the Antiochus who was involved in the Hanukkah story, who was a tremendous adversary to the Jewish people. The two main empires of the four were the south, that's Egypt, and the north, Babel and Paras. Okay, so let's take a look. And also, they, didn't, they weren't able to... Yeah, yeah, they were not in the neighborhood. Yeah. Okay, so listen to this. Perak Yud Aleph, Pasuk Aleph. V'ani b'shnas achas l'dayavesh hamadai. It was now, I was in the first year of Darius the Mede. Now, who is Darius the Mede? There were two Daryavishes. Who are the two Daryavishes? Well, you had... Wasn't one Esther's son? A lot of information over here. Darius the first, Darius the Mede, was the king of the empire of, emperor of Madai. Who came after Darius the Mede? Kairesh. Kairesh. Kairesh was the one who gave permission to build Beis Amikdash and then he rescinded it. Who came after Kairesh? Achashverosh. Who came after Achashverosh? Darius the Persian. So you have four kings Darius the Mede, Darius the Mede, Daryavish the Madai. You have Kairesh, Achashverosh, and Daryavish Haparsi. According to some accounts, Kairish had a son. What was his son's name? His name was what? 
according to the uh, this is a uh, Yosipon, which was a takeoff on Josephus. Cyrus had a son named Cambyses. Cambyses, yes. Or in Hebrew, Bambisha. Bambisha, not Bambino, not Babe Ruth. Bambisha. Sounds good. To me. Yeah, that was his name. Now we're going to see about him. Okay. So you thought, you know, you'd sleep through high school and you'd never have to hear about this stuff again. No, now you're learning that you really needed to know this stuff because otherwise you're not going to understand the Tanakh. Okay. It was now in the first year of Darius the Mead, the first Dayavash. Omdi, I stood up. Who's, who's I? Who's talking? Gavriel the Malach. I stood up to support. To give strength. Look at Rashi. When the Malchus of Babel fell, and the empire of Media and Persia stood up, and the heavenly angels of Persia and Media were asking God, God, we want to get the Jews. We want to make life miserable for the Jews. So, Ani Gabriel Amarati Lamachzik Ulamoyz Michal Sachem. You have to understand that whenever you see things happening in this world, this world is not where it's at. Really, before anything happens, the battle takes place in heaven. Once the battle has taken place in heaven, whatever the outcome of the battle in heaven is, this world is merely a reflection of what has already taken place in heaven. For example, for example, um, Yaakov Avinu sends word to, to Esav, right? He says, Kisarisa. Batucha. He said, Your name is Israel because you fought, you fought with angels and men. So the mouth, so Rashi says, The angels. Army, you fought with me. And men is, you beat Lavan and you beat Esav. The question is, Yaakovina didn't face Esav yet. He hasn't even seen Esav. Why is the angel telling Yaakov that you already beat Esav? He hasn't seen Esav. The answer is, once Yaakov beat the angel of Esav, so then, whatever will happen between him and Esav is a foregone conclusion. It's already occurred. It's already happened. Hey, you know, they used to ask uh, Rav Khan and Vasarman that, you know, we should protest and we should stage, uh, we should have um, official marches and parades against what the government is doing. He says it's all nonsense. Because if the government has issued a decree, that means in heaven it's already a foregone conclusion. We, to, to accomplish in this world is not hitting the nail on the head. You have to effectuate in the Shamayim, in the heavens, because that's where it's at. So therefore... I mean, you hit the laws in the heaven. Yeah, the Sari Shalesav, the, the Malach Hamavas is in heaven. Whatever Hitler did down here is only a reflection of the Ratzon of Shemaim. He was alone, the uh, 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 Satan. They said he had chicken legs. He was a, he was a shed, a huh. Shindala. Some people say that he never took off his boots even when he slept because his feet were deformed. They were like chicken legs. So they say he was a Shein Dalit. He wasn't really a human. Mm-hmm. Where, who, where did you say this? I read it in a it's book. It's a Messiah. I read it in a book. So a book. it's very interesting. The Malach is saying that when the heavenly angels of Persia and Media requested of God, God, could we get the Jews? So Gabriel said, I, I really took up the cause and I went to Michal and I said, Michal, Michal, defend the Jews. Because in the Shamayim, our main defending angel is Michal. Okay. Now listen to this. Okay, this is when it gets juicy. Okay? Don't, don't ever say Daniel isn't juicy. Pasuk Beis. Viata and now MS Agilach. Let me tell you the truth. Going back to what he said in Pasuk Chaf Aleph. What's written in a true writing. Hine oid shloisha melachim oimdim lefaras. There will yet be another three kings of Persia. Who are the additional three kings of Persia? So far we had Daryavesh Hamadai. We're going to have Koyresh. Achashverosh, Daryavash Ham Parsi. The Haravi, the fourth king. Now, when we say the fourth king, in other words, another three, so in total four. 
and the right, so in total four. So the fourth king is Daryavash Haparsi. Yashiroi Shagoda Mikhail. He's gonna be the wealthiest of all. And as his wealth becomes strong, he will arouse everyone. Ace Malchus Yavan against the Greek Empire. Says Rashi. There will yet be another three kings. Chazal Amru, Who are the three kings? Zekoresh, Beachashverosh, Vedaryavesh, Shabana Habayis, Daryavesh. The Persian built the the third the second base of me. Umatam Ravi. Why does it say then the fourth? Ravi Lamadai. Including Daryavish the Madai, he's the fourth. However, Rashi says there's another version. Avo Basefa Yosef and Gorion in Yosifon in chapter three. Kasov, Shahayaloi Ben Le Koresh. Koresh did have a son. Shamalach Tahtov Lufne Maloch Achashverosh. Between Koresh and Achashverosh, Koresh had a son. And his name was, in English, what was his name? Cambyses. Bambisha. Or Bambisha. Ubechaz Kosen, in the strength of Daryavesh Ba'ashra Ya'ir, with his wealth, he will arouse his whole Malchus to fight with the kings of Yavan. Okay, now listen to what's happening. After the Persians, who arises after the Persians? Whenever you see a Persian, you should know there's a Greek not far behind. Fiyamad Melech Gadol. A great king will stand up. Says Rashi, Biyavan, who Alexandros Mokdon, Alexander from Macedonia. Umashal Mimshal Rav. And he will command great power. Biyasa Kersoinai. He'll do as he pleases. Rashi says, he'll do as he pleases to, to, to Dayavesh, the king of Paras. He'll kill him. And they will accept his reign. And the Persians will be subservient to the Yavanim. Now, so we had earlier that when we talk about Alexander, it talks about him flying. Why? Because his victories were so quick, it almost appeared that he was flying through the air. He was able to lightning strike from one area to the next. Blitzkrieg. Pasik Dalit. Ucha Amdai. But when he gets very strong in his pinnacle of power, Tishaver Malchusai, his Malchus will break. The Seichatz, it will split. Le Arba Ruchay Sashamayim. To the four ends of the heavens. Veloy Lach Risai. After it breaks, it will not be to his end. What is a person's end? What is a person's achris? His descendants. The dominion of Alexander will not go to his descendants. Now, did Alexander have any children? So those who know Greek history will remember that Alexander had... Did you say before Alexander had four... He had four generals. But did he have any biological descendants? He had two sons. Yeah, he did. Heracles? Did they teach you this in Cheder? Alexander had two boys. Heracles, who is an illegitimate son, and Alexander the fourth August, who was born posthumously. Augustus? No. We'll say posthumously. After he died. He was born after he died. Okay? He was conceived before he died. <laughs> and he was born he was born after he died. They were both killed in their childhood. You know what? In their childhood. Okay. So Alexander did not have any living descendants. Right? His two boys were killed in their childhood. So that's what the Pasuk means. V'loy la'ach arisai. You see, if you don't know Greek history, you can't understand the Pesukim. You see, continuously the Mabam says, Kosov b'divrei hayomim. He doesn't mean divrei hayomim in Tanakh. He means in the Greek chronicles. V'loy la'ach arisai. His dominion will not go to his end. And his power that is given over to generals will not be like Alexander's power. They will only be a watered-down version of Alexander. Asher Marshal that he wrote. Kisinashes Malchusai. His Malchus will be torn away. And given to others. Milavad besides these four. In other words, even though the main inheritors of an Alexander's power were these four generals who were again who remembers the four generals Talmai 
um, Seleucus and Antigonus and Philip. Nevertheless, they were others of lesser import. Says Rashi. Philip was Alexander's brother. So for anybody to know Daniel, good, he got his own Greek That's what Rabbi yeah. said before. Yeah. Okay. So Rabbi said, look at Rashi. When Alexander became very strong, the Yamir al Khaskasai, and he stood on his might in the pinnacle of his power, Tishaver Al Khusai Shayamos, he died. Batechat's Liarba Ruchai Sashmaim, he was divided to the four ends of the heavens. Kasa Besefer Ben Gurion. In Ben Gurion Rashi says it's written. Not not Ben Gurion. No, not David Ben Gurion. His Malchus was divided to four heads. These are the four heads of the eagle, Shera Daniel. That in Paragzayin it says, A leopard. A leopard, thank you. That Daniel saw and behold another beast like a leopard. It had four wings, of a bird upon it. The Arba Roshin Lechayusa. And the four heads, him shall zeb a mizrach, vizeb a marav, vizeb a tzafain, vizeb a daraim. And also Daniel saw the same thing in Parakhas, where he saw the horn of the he goat that, that uh, was broken by the four ho- horns that came out after it. And it will not be left of Eloila Acharisa, it won't go to his children. The dominion will not be left to his sons. Only to the sons of his. Family after him, Eno Neufel, Ella Aloshon Banim. And the word Achrisa refers to children. And they will not inherit the same power as Alexander. Pasake, you ready? This is very juicy stuff. Okay? Was he Alexander? No. Vayechazak Melachanega, maybe in Nebuchadnezzar or Parai. Vayechazak Melachanega, Umin Sarav. And the king of the south became strong. Look carefully. Vayechezak Melech Hanegev. The king of the south became strong. Of the four kingdoms mentioned, only two had lasting importance. The south, Egypt, whose ruler was Talmai, or his official name is Talmai the first Soter, the son of Lagos. He founded the, the Talmaic dynasty. And the other, the other empire that had Kiam was the north, Syria. Syria was ruled by Seleucus I, Nicator, the son of Antiochus. He, he started the Seleucus dynasty. So you have the, of the four, the southern one was founded by Tamai, the northern one was founded by Seleucus. Okay? Look in, look in the passage carefully. By Yechazak Melech Hanegev, the king of the south became strong. Umin Sarov! Not only did he become stronger than the Northern Empire, he even became stronger than the ministers of the Northern Empire. That's how you read the passage. By Yechazak Melech HaNegev. What's the what's the even? It's a kalv- if he became stronger from the king Avada, he became stronger from the Sarah. Yeah, but, but what's usually, the what's the kalvachaimer? Because usually the the general takes orders from a minister. What it means and to say is right. It says like this. He became stronger, umin sarav. If it says, then the officers included in that, it's like the pasuk is not saying, and from his northern adversaries, it says he became stronger from even the princes. But that means from the northern northern prophet, um, empire and the princes. Yeah, in other words, he became stronger. It's not a kavachaymer. We're not saying a kavachaymer. It means like this: vayechazak melech hanegev. The southern king became stronger than who? Than the northern king. It doesn't say. It leaves it out. It's understood. Like like this. Like in the passage. Halulu Hashem kol goyim. Shabachu kol ha'umim. Praise Hashem all goyim. Praise Him all the umim. Ki gavar aleinu chasei. Because Hashem was kind to us. Why should the goyim praise Hashem? Because Hashem was kind to us. So the passage means like this. Ready? You ready? Anyone here ever say halal? No, hello? Right? Yeah, hello? No. On Rosh Chodesh? 
So we say, Hallelujah Hashem Kol Goyim. Praise God all the nations, because He's kind to us. Why, why does the Italian have to thank God because Hashem's nice to the Jews? The answer is you have to know how to read the Pasuk. Hallelujah Hashem Kol Goyim. Shabachu Kol Umim. And certainly we have to praise Hashem. You know why? So the Pasuk means like this. Goyim have to praise God. We certainly have to praise God because God is kind to us. Yeah, but what does have to do with this part? Ah. <laughs> it means like this. He became stronger than... The Southern Empire became stronger than the Northern Empire and the Sarin. And the Sarin. It's not a Kavachamir. It's just going unstated. Vayechezak Olaf. And he overpowered him. Umashal, and he ruled over Mimshal Rav Mimshaltai, a great rulership from his dominion. Look in Rashi. Vayechazak Melech Hanegav, Haroish, the head, Asher Yamlech Benegav, that ruled in the south. Yechazak Min Haroish Shekenegdai was stronger than the opposing head. Hamoylech Betzafayim who ruled in the north, Umin Sarav, and from his offices. Now what does this mean? The, the Malbim reads it like this. There are different ways of reading this Pasuk. One way of reading it is the king of the south will go stronger than the north and the northern no- nobles. Another way to read this is Min Sarav. Like this. Take a look. Vayechzak Mel Chanegev. Instead of U Min Sarav, it can be read Min Sarav. The king of the south was among the officers of Alexander. Because Talmai was a Macedonian nobleman. And he had been one of Alexander's most trusted generals. That's how the Barbanel learns. Another way to read this is the way the Malbam reads it. The Malbam reads it, Vayechazak Olav, Umin Sarav. One of his servants will become even stronger than him. Again, who are we talking about? We're talking about Talmai in the south. Talmai's generals was, one of Talmai's generals was Seleucius. Seleucius, who was one of Talmai's generals, went to the north, and Seleucius became even stronger than Talmai himself. So, Vayechezak Olav Me Umin Sarav From among the officers of the south He became stronger than Tamai himself Now let's, let's hear what happened over here After Seleucius flees to Babylonia After he, excuse me After Seleucius starts his own empire in Babylonia The Persians started moving toward Seleucius' empire Whereupon Seleucius had to flee back to his Rebbe, Talmai. And then, after Talmai, together with Seleucius, defeat Antigonus, the Persian emperor, Seleucius goes back to the north. Okay. Now Seleucius is back in Babylon. So listen to what's happening. Seleucius... Talmai? No, Seleucius and Talmai join up against Antigonus. Who's Antigonus? He's the, the ruler of the Persian corner. Of the, he's one of the four generals. Yeah. And he's the ruler of the Persian part. And Seleucius and Talmai defeat Antigonus. Now listen to what happens. Yes, yeah, so what happens afterwards? Listen, listen. Ah, uh, ah. Uh, after Antigonus is defeated, Seleucius returns to Babylon. To the north. To the north. He enlarges his kingdom to the east. What's east of Persia? India. Hulu? Hulu? North south, he enlarges the kingdom to India. He enlarges westward to Syria. So he has a massive empire. Syria, Persia, yeah. India. That's called Antioch. He. Yeah. There was a Shidduch. Oh, you ready? We're now we're up to the Shidduch. That's where everything gets haywire. <laughs> by the, the, the Shidduch. So you have in the north a major empire ruled by Seleucus. You have in the south a major Egyptian empire led by Talmai. 
Now let's understand, these people don't last forever. So, they're fighting for many years. Now after Seleucus, you had Antiochus number one, Soter. So the first ruler of Antioch was Seleucus the first Nicator. Not nicotine. Nicator. Okay? That's number one. After him came Antiochus the first Soter. After him came Antiochus the second Theos. Fine. These, these were the, the rulers of the north. In the south, first you had Talmai the first. After Talmai the first, who did you have? Now, Talmai the first was not a friend of the Jews, but Talmai the second was a friend of the Jews. He was called Talmai the second Philadelphus. Okay? Not to be con- confused with Philadelphia cream cheese. But it was probably from that name. From that. <laughs> Talmai II Philadelphus was a good friend of the Jews. In fact, Talmai II Philadelphus was the sponsor of the Greek translation of the Bible, the Septuagint. The Targum Sh- the Shivim, right? What we learn about in, in Masech the Megillah. So now, after many years of fighting, they decided, let's make peace. Enough fighting. You have plenty of land, Persia. India, Syria, and we have plenty of land in Egypt. So they decided to make peace. Now how are they going to make peace? Talmai II sent a letter to Antiochus II. Antiochus II was married to a woman by the name of Laodice. 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 By the way, Laodice was the daughter of Antiochus' uncle, who is the brother of Antiochus I. So Antiochus II... (laughs) was married to Leotis. You ready? You ready for this Mesa? Antiochus II was married to Leotis. She had already borne him two children. Tama II said, you know what, to make peace, why don't you marry my daughter? Take Leotis, throw her out the window, into the lake, and let her go fly a kite. After she jumps into the lake. Get rid of your wife, marry my daughter, and that will create a convergence of the two empires. It will be Shalom al Hagoyim. So sure enough... Why didn't you have two wives? And we're not allowed to have two wives? No, only yeah. one didn't one work. Queen, one they queen, one queen. They, they, were, they understood one is more than enough. And the, sec, the daughter of Tamai, her name was Berenice. Berenice. Like Berry. Berenice. Berry. No, Berry is like one thing. Berry. <laughs> and Berenice. Berry. And he Berry. takes Laotis. And she said, he says, adios amigo in, in uh, Persian. And he marries Berenice. The problem is, then the Shver died. Tamai died. After Tamai died, Antiochus II said, what big yichus is it to be married to the daughter of someone who's dead? The yichus is to be married to the daughter of the, gen- of the emperor of, of Egypt. But now he's dead. So, what did he do? He took Berenice and he said, adios to you. And the problem is, Talmai made a deal that if you marry my daughter, whatever son she bears to you is going to be the next emperor of Joint both, empire. of both empires. So anyway, but now that Talmai's dead, Tama, um, Antiochus II takes back Laodice, but Laodice knows that not her sons are going to be the next emperor. She's Berenice's son is going to be. So you know what she does? Kills. She kills her. She takes poison, and on Shabbos when she's serving Antiochus II poison, um, cholent, she puts some cyanide in the kishka he takes a bite of the kishka, he says this is the best kishka I ever tasted in my life, and moments later he's in the oil of MS the problem is but the boy, the boy is the, the succeeder of the, of the empire so you know what she does? the first thing she does Laodice takes Berenice and she has her throat slit and then she has her entire family murdered. And this is what made that the Persian Empire and the Egyptian Empire, the Seleucus, the Antioch, led by Seleucus, and the Egyptian, Ta- the Ptolemaic Empire were never able to converge. And when the Goyim are not able together, things are always better off for the Jews. And we'll read this in the Pasuk next time.
You've just experienced another Torah class brought to you by TorahAnytime.com.